Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today I thought I'd take a quick look at the DCS version 2.9 update that released earlier this week. So the headline feature is that NVIDIA DLSS has been added. Uh, also there's now the option to enable anti-aliasing with DLAA. So in this quick performance demo, I'm going to do a quick run with both AA off and no upscaling. Then I'll turn on MSAA on four times, so you can see what the performance hit is for that. Then add, uh, well, then enable DLAA to see what the performance difference is between the two and what they'll look like visually. And then we'll go through some of the NVIDIA DLSS settings on the different quality levels to see what that looks like, both with the sharpness initially set to zero, and then we'll turn up to 0 0.5. So really this is just to see what the GPU performance gains are from doing this. Uh, on the Quest 3, maxed out at 90 hertz. Um, I'm also using a 4090 and a AMD 7800X3D, but this particular benchmark should be GPU bottlenecked. So it's to see what the different settings are like, and we'll go through some of the comparisons in some detail after the videos run through, and then I'll give you my final thoughts at the end as to what settings I'll probably go with in future. First up on the comparison, we're going to compare anti-aliasing off with upscaling off. So no upscaling at all and no anti-aliasing versus the uh, new MSAA 4X on the right also upscaling off. So we'll be able to see what the image difference is with MSAA 4X on, no upscaling versus nothing at all. Uh, just so we get an idea of the performance hit and what the quality difference is on the image. So just take a light. So we definitely see some shimmering here on the left and MSA 4X has removed a lot of that. However, if we look at the performance difference, we're on 53 FPS now as opposed to 67. So that obviously is quite a heavy performance hit of enabling this. And then what we've done on the left here now is we've turned on deep learning anti-aliasing. So performance wise, we're about eight FPS more. Um, so a lot more performant. 
And we've also lost the shimmering now. However, if we uh, take a peek at some of the details, we'll be able to compare the two. So you can see with MSA 4X on the right, we've still got some of the detail retained on the win top windows of this building here. But on the left, we have DLA DLAA, we've lost some there. So it is a trade-off, uh, but it definitely removes the uh, the jaggies and the shimmering. Uh, so that's that's really the, the main difference between the two. It's, it's pretty good for uh, performance reasons, so if you're close to the edge of being between like a refresh rate on your headset, it's probably worth considering, but obviously if you've got the performance headroom, um, MSAA is the way to go. Right, I'll just let it play on to the, uh, the next comparison. Pull up, pull up. Pull up, pull up. So what we've done now, we've left DLAA on the left and we've enabled DLSS quality settings. So we're doing some upscaling here. So what we expect is a, a jump in performance and we have, we've gone from 58 FPS now to 72. So the real question is, what is the uh, the image quality drop between the two? Um, so we'll try and look out for some detail to, to look at. So perhaps the windows on this building there's more contrast here on the left so upscaling you can see we have lost a little bit of detail keep in mind this vr image is cropped in quite a bit so it, it does look a lot better in the headset we are really quite zoomed into the image here so perhaps if we look at the distant objects you can see there is more contrast here in this section um, so there is a, again a notable drop in quality enabling dlss but uh we're now at 73 FPS, which is quite notable. That's um, higher than the minimum refresh of the Quest 3. So potentially if you are running in this mode, you could get above the um, the refresh rate and you won't need to use asynchronous space warp or create any uh, fake frame generation, should I say. So that's probably the big biggest benefit of switching to this. But we'll go over more of that towards the end of the video. All right, we'll let it play a bit more. Okay, what we've done now is um, this was DLSS quality with the sharpening set to zero and we've now bumped it up to 0.5 as per the recommendation of the uh, release notes. So I actually remember when I looked at this, it did make quite a bit of improvement on the clarity and you can even actually see here, I don't know if it's coming through on this video, but the, the contrast looks a bit better and the edges are more clearly defined. I think this is the recommended setting if I remember correctly, so I won't go any higher than this uh, the, the notes make reference to say it could look worse if you go too far with the sharpening option uh, but if we try and zoom in a bit we'll see if we can pick out any obvious details so e even the pattern here does look notice noticeably sharper than with it set to zero i just look at the, the uh, heads up display information it's more the contrast has been boosted more green to me and again here these these uh, lines on this, the windows on this building look a bit clearer so having sharpening set to 0 0.5 is definitely the way to go on this setting so we'll play this a bit more and then we'll swap out dlss quality to dlss balance next So we've jumped a little bit in FPS, we've probably gained about 5 FPS between the two settings. Uh, and if I recall, that visually I don't remember seeing that much of a drop. Um, there was a drop for sure, but um, it didn't seem like a massive amount compared to just enabling DLSS in the first place. So if we uh, have a quick zoom in, see if we can spot any differences between these buildings that are obvious. I think the, uh, the contrast in the distant buildings seems potentially a bit better 
So we're comparing DLSS quality to DLSS balanced at 0.5 sharpening. Looking at the distance. There's a bit more contrast, I'd say, but there's not that much in it. Look at the dark sections here. And the contrast looks better. It's as if the colors retained slightly better on the quality mode. So next we've got the comparison between DLS quality and now performance. Um, so again, not much of a, a bump in FPS here. Um, also image wise, there isn't too much of a difference. So 75 FPS versus roughly 70 on quality. So you're gaining about seven. So we gain about five more FPS between performance mode and quality mode. And we'll just do a quick pause there to have a look at the difference between the building. Actually the cars on the right side on performance mode versus those on the left. So yeah, you can see we are retaining more detail, especially on this, this car here. So the, the visual difference, particularly when you're looking on small details, it is there. And after trying them, um, my, my takeaway is, yeah, I'd probably, if I was going to use DLSS, I'd stick to quality mode. So in summary, DLAA on its own does reduce shimmers and jagged edges and performs better than MSAA four times, but it doesn't look quite as good. In terms of DLSS, it behaves like DLSS that I've seen in other VR games. It's okay if you're struggling with performance and trying to get above your headset's refresh rate. However, before enabling DLSS, I'd try enabling fixed foveated rendering via the OpenXR toolkit first, or just lowering your graphics. If I were to use DLSS, I'd probably just stick to quality mode with sharpening set at 0.5 for now. In terms of settings I'm going to go for, normally for sim racing, I try to avoid asynchronous space warp and run games at the headset's native refresh rate. However, for slower flight sim games, running at 45 FPS with asynchronous forced enabled to achieve 90 Hertz with MSAA, at 4x seem like the best option for flying slowly uh, so for both the a10 and for the apache i'll probably use it in that mode however if you're doing faster action dog fights like in a world war ii aircraft where you're looking around quite a lot or doing other aerial combat then you might prefer running at the native refresh rate of your headset in which case dlss might be the preferred option all right hope you found this video useful if you did, don't forget to leave a thumbs up and I'll see you in the next one.